I'm Mr. Beat, and look at this map. It's a map of Kansas from 1946, right before the explosive growth of suburbanization in America. No, wait a second. Actually, look at this wad of cash. Money. It's one of the most fundamental components of our society. People pay money. It affects how we act, how we feel, and how we spend 80,000 hours of our working People pay lives. Money. Money is one of those money. things. People pay money. Money. Money, money. money makes money. the world go money. Money. People pay money. money. This used to be enough to buy my weekly amount of yogurt. But thanks to inflation, this wad of cash is no longer enough. Consumer spending on groceries rose. Inflation rose there at the highest rate in almost 40 years. The highest inflation in 41 years. Drivers are fuming over the prices at the pump. Consumers are getting tired of inflation. It's pretty outrageous right now. I'm pissed. Inflation's bite has been particularly pronounced with some groups of Americans. But this video is more than about inflation. This this video is about a video about inflation by Johnny Harris. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Look, I'm a big fan of Johnny Harris. He makes videos that are so engaging that learning is fun to a wider audience. Unlike my dorky videos. But he recently made a video about inflation that, at best, is misleading and at worst is just plain wrong. Okay, you don't have to play the Johnny Harris style music anymore. I reacted to this video live. Oh. Well, do it live! F it. Do it live! On Twitch, but only like 30 people watch that. And ever since I've been thinking about how many economics teachers are going to play Johnny Harris's inflation video to their impressionable students, and how many of these impressionable students will just believe every word Johnny Harris says as if it's gospel. I mean, Johnny's viewers already seem to believe every word he says. After all, he's so good at communicating that people just assume he's always correct. Some of you maybe even assume that about me. Okay, well, <laughs> I get stuff wrong myself sometimes, okay? Nobody's perfect. Anyway, I edited down the live stream to make it more digestible, and now you're going to be seeing that. First and foremost, he's a communicator, which we all are, but I think he puts too much emphasis on the bells and whistles and making it look good and telling a good story versus getting necessarily all the facts right. That all said, in my opinion, I think he almost always gets the basic facts right. So the video is called Inflation. Explained in six minutes. And I started to watch it, but I didn't finish it um, when it first came out. And I was like, you know what? This might be a good candidate for a video to react to because I taught economics. I designed a curriculum. I've written economic scripts for the, the channel Professor Dave Explains. I am currently making economics videos for a company called Chegg. It's part of what I studied when I was in uh, college. All right, let's go ahead and start playing this. No, no cool intro, no fancy music. I just want to explain inflation in six minutes. <laughs> that was a cool intro though. I have a degree in economics. I spent years trying to understand this. You would think that this would be really good because of that, but... Mm. So let's see if I can boil it down. What is inflation? Why is it rising? Why are people worried? And what do interest rates have to do the with it? The Federal Reserve is raising the Fed interest rate to raise interest rates. Highest rate. inflation in 40 years. Listen, I know that I make long videos. I'm into nuance. I'm into backstory. Well, this isn't that. This is quick. Quick, 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 quick. No, really, this is quick. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, you can explain inflation adequately in six minutes. Now, causes of inflation is a, that, that's where it gets complicated. But the definition of inflation is the general increase in prices across all markets. Okay, first up, the simplest definition. Inflation is when there is more money in the economy than stuff to spend it on. So, no, that that's not... <laughs> <laughs> We're not off to a good start here. It's related to inflation. Basically, this definition is only one part of inflation. I think he's already gonna go down the road here of money supply. It's all about the money supply. When you create too much money, print too much money, that's inflation. But if you're like me, the simplest definition never does it for you. But that isn't the simplest definition. The simplest definition is the general increase of prices. 
That's it. So let's try this. Imagine a village that has one market where people buy all of their stuff, their food, their clothes. But one day the government shows up because they're worried about the economy of this village. So they tell the people that if they wanna take out a loan, they're gonna make sure that the banks will not charge them a high interest rate. So he's leaning heavily on monetary policy here. So the Federal Reserve, in case you're not familiar with it, especially if you're watching from outside the United States, it's the central bank of the United States. It's not part of the government. It works closely with the government, the federal government specifically. But at the same time, it's also not completely private. It kind of is this own thing, this own entity. And it is very powerful. There's a network of banks across the United States. It's the Federal Reserve System. They manage the money supply, but they also, they loan out money. And they set interest rates um, for banks. Primarily though, uh, to the treasury of the United States federal government, the executive branch, to distribute money to us, various programs the federal government is responsible for. Remember, Congress, the legislative branch, they're the ones who decide should we or shouldn't we spend money, and Congress decides what do we spend money on. But after they decide, then it's over to the Treasury Department and the Federal Reserve. So when we're talking about the Federal Reserve and inflation, we're talking about what they're doing to the money supply. Are they pumping money in there or expansionary policy? Or the other option is contractionary. You're raising interest rates so that it's harder to get money. They want to encourage the people to take out loans and spend money. Oh, and they also drop off a giant pile of cash for everyone in the village. And everyone in the village is like, sweet, I'm feeling pretty rich. Villagers now are going to their market and they're buying way more stuff. Already with this example, he's, he's going right towards, okay, inflation happens because the government makes money and gives it to the citizens <laughs> or makes it easy for citizens to get. Um, this is problematic because there are actually three main causes of inflation. And remember, this is debated among economists. But first, yes, what he's saying, the money supply. So if you have too much money and supply, you have inflation. In fact, we see it all the time, and especially in developing countries, infamously Zimbabwe. They had something called hyperinflation, which is inflation on steroids, where one day the currency would be worth something, the next day it would, it would be worth like half that or a fourth of that. The second cause of inflation is just simply an increase in aggregate demand. More people are making more money and if more people can afford to buy stuff, they're gonna buy more and so prices will go up. Sometimes consumers have more money because of some kind of stimulus from the government, true, but generally that's not how it works. The third cause of inflation is when producers have to spend more money in order to produce. Occasionally, yeah, it, it just costs more money to produce stuff. And so if it costs more money to produce stuff, then yeah, they, <laughs> they're gonna increase prices. Many of them have been eyeing the fancy electric bike in the market that before they couldn't justify, but now they totally can because they have all this new money. The store owner's like, sweet, this is great for business, but he's running out of bikes. In fact, he's running out of everything because now all of these people have extra money and they're buying way more than they used to. The store owner's like, I can't keep up with all this demand. I should raise prices. And that is inflation. Uh, that's very misleading because the primary driver of Income growth is not the government, is not the Federal Reserve increasing the money supply. That's not the only way that people get more money to spend. The main way is they're rising incomes um, due to markets and the skills they provide with their labor. But the village is all of us and the market is the entire economy. When there's extra money floating around and people wanna spend it faster than businesses can make stuff, then all of the businesses in all of the industries raise their prices and that is inflation. There's evidence that demand actually shrunk during the early stages of the pandemic. In response, production also shrunk. When production finally started to pick back up again, it was too late. People were buying, but they couldn't get what they needed because supply chains were so backed up. It's a natural part of the economy. It's kind of a good thing in small doses. It is a good thing in small doses. You want a little bit of inflation. No one's going to risk investing money in anything if they're not going to make money from it eventually, generally speaking. If you have a little bit of inflation, the returns on investment are much higher because it means that the economy is growing. And it's why movie tickets used to be 25 cents and now they're like $15. And slowly over time, it's fine. Yeah, slowly over time, it is fine because it's assumed that incomes also rise at the same rate. However, there's quite overwhelming evidence over the last 40 years specifically that wages have mostly stagnated 
only in the last three or four years have we started to finally see wages go up. But because inflation being so bad currently, especially in 2022, we've seen those gains also wiped out because the inflation rate, which has been between eight to nine percent, is way higher than the rate of income growth. When COVID shut down the world, governments gave us money, free money. I think I know where he's going here with this. He's going to say because of the stimulus checks that that most Americans got in uh, 2020, and then later, actually 2021, there was another round that was smaller, but still there. That was why this crazy inflation happened. I think that's partially why, but that is totally overplayed. They're like, don't panic and hoard all your money. Instead, spend and borrow and keep the economy going. Here in the US, they literally sent us $3,200 checks. They gave 600 bucks a week okay. to people who are unemployed. That's not gonna make that much of a difference. That's just kind of getting you to buy basic necessities, most people. You're making it seem like this is such a huge amount. It's not really, I mean, Things are expensive. They gave 600 bucks a week to people who were unemployed for months and months and months. They gave subsidies to people with kids. They increased spending on food stamps. I mean, trillions and trillions of dollars of stimulus money. This was vital aid to people in need. So when he says that trillions and trillions were pumped into the economy, that's a little bit misleading. He kind of leaves that part out that businesses were the, I think the main recipient. Okay, I looked this up later and found this nifty breakdown from the New York Times. Sure enough, much of that money went to businesses. But I think the more important thing that I didn't bring up when I was live reacting to Johnny's video is the fact that he didn't bring up that this money that citizens got mostly replaced income they were not getting. But even people who didn't lose a job got a check in the mail. It was free money for everyone and we spent it. I just picked up myself a new bike. Demand is up across the country. It's time to grind, Peloton. We all just got these big checks from the government. During a pandemic, we're like, YOLO, I'm buying a boat. We're buying a boat, huh? I think that's a little bit out of touch there. <laughs> like, he's playing this up a little bit too much. It's all because people got Stimulus checks. People forget that unemployment during the COVID-19 pandemic got nearly as high as 15%. Tens of millions of Americans went from having steady incomes to no income at all. And much of this money was simply meant to replace that. They weren't buying boats, they were paying bills. Or a Peloton or whatever. Pokemon cards. There's Netflix, Fortnite. A new motor. Peloton. Good soak in a hot tub. Animal Crossing. Push it out a little bit so it's no, so we'll don't you it. dare! But pair all this new spending with the fact that the pandemic also made it harder for factories and ships and retailers to get us all this stuff. Supply chain issue. Global supply chain. Supply chain. See, that was, that was a big cause of the inflation because they literally could not get what customers wanted to customers. I was like, I couldn't go to the gym. And so I was like, oh, I'll order a kettlebell so I can work out at home. And the thing didn't come for like two months. That's just one example. And so once you finally do have stuff available, people are gonna go crazy. Cause like, oh, okay, I can buy it again. So now you have an economy where people have way more money than normal and they're ready to spend it, but the economy can't get them stuff fast enough. So what do businesses do with all this insane new demand? They raise prices all at the same time. And that is inflation. Yeah, that's a, okay. Right, that's good. But I think when you talk about demand going up, it shouldn't be your first assumption like, well, they're only spending more money because they're getting all this free money from the government. That's very misleading. But what do interest rates have to do with all this? Raising the interest rate. Interest rate. Or the Fed. Fed is Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve. Most countries have a central bank, the puppet master of the economy, the bank of all banks for that country. But it's not like a normal bank that stores our money and then lends it out and collects interest to make profit. That's what a normal private bank does. The central bank, which we call the Fed here in the US, is run by the government. It's actually not run by the government. The government kind of regulates it, but not even doesn't even really regulate it. They do, they can't even audit it. I mean, there's a reason why there's a ton of conspiracy theories about the Federal Reserve. They are truly independent, and it's arguably a good thing that they're independent because do you really want politicians in control of something like that, or would you rather have boring economists in charge of that? So their job is to set the rules or policies that all the other banks have to follow. And the central bank isn't motivated by profit, but rather their job is to babysit the economy to keep it. 
growing, to make sure people have <laughs> yeah. jobs, to make sure that prices don't yeah. fluctuate too much so that we can keep growing nicely. No slowdown, no recession. That is what the Fed is there for. But seriously, the Fed is like a puppet master and we are the puppets and it's kind of creepy. I mean, yeah, well, that's basically what I just said. So this is a great graphic here, actually. I love this. Those are the things that it does. They pull strings in the economy to get us to spend our money in a certain way, which in turn affects how much businesses raise or drop their prices. And guess what? It totally works. One of the strings that they have to pull in the economy is called the interest rate. Want to borrow money to buy a car or a house or expand your business? You're going to be way more likely to do that if you only have to pay 2% interest on that loan as opposed yeah, to like a nice 6%. Interest rate. Lower interest rates equal people and businesses want to borrow and spend money. So during the pandemic, the central bank was like, we need everyone to spend money. So they lowered the interest rate. Yeah, they actually lowered it to um, almost 0%. That's how cheap money was during the pandemic. And people borrowed and people people spent and it totally worked. We're like freaking puppets. So a low interest rate helps stimulate the economy. But once again, we're in this same place where there's now too much money to borrow and spend and not enough goods and services to spend it on. When he says we, it's mostly people that own lots of assets. So what do businesses do all at the same time? They raise prices to meet all this new demand all at the same time. And now your money is worth less. And that is inflation. Again, like corporate profits currently are high. They're making money. Most corporations are thriving right now. The ones that are struggling are the smaller businesses. So when you say that they have to raise prices in reaction to increased demand, actually, no, they don't. <laughs> Home prices rising at their highest rate. bidding war. Rents are going up by nearly 24%. So that's what's happening right now. All the prices are rising kind of at the same time. What that means is that your $100 bill is now worth 8% less than it was last year. We call that purchasing power where your money as time passes is worth less. You can buy less with the same amount of money. And imagine if that keeps happening. Like instead of 8%, it's 50%. Now your $100 bill is worth what $50 used to be. And that's when people start to freak out. And our economy that's built on human psychology starts to falter and we fall into a recession or a depression even if it gets real bad, which is exactly what the Fed is built to avoid. So they're back to pulling their strings and they've started raising rates. The Federal Reserve is raising interest the rates. The Federal Reserve taking action to try and curb rising inflation. They're gently raising the interest rate to cool down all of this hardcore spending and borrowing. See if they can steer the ship back on course and let's hope it works. I think the video is uh, misleading because the causes of inflation are complicated. So even when I say the three main causes of inflation are increasing the money supply, increase in aggregate demands, and producers increasing due to higher production costs, even within that, there's lots of different variables and causes with, within those that further complicate things. In conclusion, I understand that it is difficult not to oversimplify stuff when you make a video that's just six minutes or less. I mean, I deal with this all the time. That's why my videos are getting longer and longer and longer. But the reason why I still felt compelled to make this video to respond to Johnny Harris is because he butchered the definition of inflation right out of the gate. You actually can simplify the definition of inflation. And he did the opposite of that. He made it confusing right away anyway and i know i'm biased but if you want to learn about inflation from a better video i recommend checking out this video by professor dave explains which uh i just so happen to write the script for but again i mean no disrespect to johnny harris i love his content in fact i would sometimes play his stuff in my own classroom However, if you are in an economics class right now and your, your teacher puts on his inflation video for the class, you might just casually bring up to your teacher that when it comes to learning about inflation, Johnny's video does more harm than good. But speaking of inflation, check out this segue. Did you know that investing in masterpiece art can hedge against inflation? The last time inflation was near its current levels, contemporary art prices are appreciated at an average yearly rate of 13.5%. Now, historically, you'd need millions to help protect your savings with fine art. But with this video sponsor, Masterworks, you can invest in blue chip museum grade artwork for 
a fraction of the cost of the full painting. This isn't an NFT. This is work from legendary artists like Picasso, Banksy, Monet. Masterworks buys the paintings up front, qualifies them with the SEC, and if the painting sells for a profit, you receive your share. Masterworks' last three exits fetched 13.9%, 17.8%, and 21.5% for their investors. Nearly 600,000 people have signed up, and demand is growing. But my subscribers can get priority access by visiting the link in the description of this video. Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I recommend checking out my Twitch channel where I live react to stuff every Monday morning, 9 a.m. Central. Just ditch work and school, okay? And I react to various economics, American history, and geography videos over there. I add context, correct as needed. Johnny Harris, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. Everyone else who's watching, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me. If I got anything wrong, let me know.